Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another Sunday here at Jackson Community Church, wherever you find yourselves zooming in from, you're being hosted in the Jackson Community Church, and it is Lent. We welcome you, and we have just a few announcements to begin the service. The first of these is that this afternoon we have two programs. One at three o'clock is the Lenten, the second in the series on mindfulness being offered by Anjali Rose. This was coordinated by our deacons as an offering for our community to help with one way to approach Lent as a healing journey coming out of this time that we're still transitioning from a year of pandemic, which we're really celebrating the anniversary of right now. Not that it's a celebration, but it's a marking of, and the deacons felt the need to focus on healing and recovery as parts of our journey right now towards Easter. So if you're able, the link to register for Anjali's mindfulness workshop was sent out to you last night and again this morning. You do need to pre-register, so please do that in plenty of time so that you can actually attend the session with her, which you will probably find invaluable. Second is that if you're part of the Racial Justice Working Group, we have a meeting this evening at 7. And there's also a music team meeting tomorrow at 3 o'clock. That's just staff and our um, representative, our lay representative meeting. And Beyond that, we invite you, the deacons then helped put up the way of the cross. You can see here one of the crosses that just arrived. If you have a cross that uh, you wish to share with the church to put up in our installation, we will find a home for it. Um, only lend ones that you would feel safe having in the sanctuary 24 7 through easter we are going to have the stations up through easter there are various ways to go through them they are experiential but you can simply go through and pray you can go through and interact um, you can simply sit in the presence of the various ways that people have represented the cross in their lives but that is here in the church and it's yet another offering of the deacons and other members of our community who asked for ways to engage with this journey. We, we hope to bring you also a walking version of the Stations of the Cross, both as an audio and a video, so that you can actually walk your own Stations of the Cross and just listen to audio so that you can participate in another sensory way anywhere in the landscape that you find yourself. So many ways to journey together this season. And now I want to just make sure, are there any other announcements for the life of the church this morning that I have not covered? Looks like we're good. Actually, I'm going to just remind us too, we do have council meeting this Wednesday at seven o'clock. So if you're on council, make sure that is also on your calendar. And now I'm going to turn us over to the music of Jeanette's flute as our centering experience this morning. So please do remain muted and we're going to listen to a flute as we gather ourselves and enter the time of worship.
Can you guys hear me? Now you can hear me. There's always this delay. I have to keep building in the three seconds of time. Um, our younger families are going to begin to help us during Lent by reading and leading confession. And although I see families here, I haven't yet sent texts, so I'm, I'm not going to put anybody on the spot unless you feel ready just to read straight off the screen. If you want to wait a week so that you have the text to look at in advance, just raise your hand if you want to read, and if you don't, I'll read this week. Okay, so I think, I think I'm going to read this week, and the Varans are going to lead us next week in the confession and the scripture. And then the week after that, I believe the Robertses are going to lead us. So we're going to have some youth leadership in the next few weeks with our texts. And I thank you. Thank you so much for being willing to do that with us. We're going to enter our time of worship with the confession that comes from Psalm 130. We will put that text up on the screen. And I ask that you stay muted but that you read this aloud together. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in your word I hope. My soul waits more than those who watch for the morning. Hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with God's self is great power to redeem. It is God's self who will redeem all iniquities. So ends that reading. We follow our confession with the prayers of the people. I have three prayers that were shared in the last 24 hours that I wish to share first with you, and then I'm going to invite first the people in the sanctuary with any prayers they may have, followed by those in Zoom. We're going to begin with prayers of concern, and then we'll go to prayers of celebration. The first three prayers, two are shared from the 8 o'clock group. Prayers for David who is a colleague and friend of several members of this community and although distant, going through some very serious medical conditions. And also Park, also going through some serious medical conditions and in need of your prayers for healing. And finally, Roy Lundquist updated the news about Nancy Lundquist. She has been transferred from Mass General to hospice care in Lincoln, Massachusetts. Um, she's experiencing very, it's a very acute situation. I'm not sure what this means in terms of expectations, or I'm not even going to put a time to this, but she's in hospice. So please lift up in prayer Roy, Nancy, their children, and their grandchildren. She will be very close to her family. She's allowed to have visitors. Roy is putting on hold other plans that he had originally been making, and he'll be staying closer to her, going back and forth between New Hampshire and here, but being able to visit Nancy. And she will also be supported by her children and grandchildren, as will Roy. So we ask for your prayers for them. And now I'm going to turn to the sanctuary here, and I have two prayers. So, Sue, if you want to share prayers. For Barbie Brown. Under the weather. And side effects from the vaccination kind of got to Barbie Brown. So just prayers for Barbie to feel better after she recuperates from her second vaccination. We know that we're very grateful for those vaccinations, but they do come with some complications too. And Kevin has a prayer for us.
prayers for Joanne and her father and prayers for different pastors here in the Valley and people that work in nonprofits who have been very friendly and helpful and supportive to Kevin. Are there prayers out in Zoom, wherever you may be? If so, please unmute and go ahead and share your prayers. These are prayers of concern first. I see Gillian has one. I have a prayer of thanksgiving. I would like to thank all of you for your prayers for my son-in-law, Andy, who's been going through cancer treatments. He's in his mid fifties. And of course my daughter's husband and the father of my beautiful granddaughters. And it's been very scary, but he seems to have turned a corner now and he greeted me with a hug and a big smile when I saw him last week and it was just thrilling and I credit all of the prayers from all of you. Thank you so very much. So from Gillian, it's a prayer. I'm going to call it a prayer that that bridges both concern and celebration because this is not over. It's ongoing, but he is experiencing new thresholds that are really important on his journey with cancer. Other prayers, um, I see Jennifer and I see Claire. So Jennifer. Great. Um, I have a coworker that was put in hospice on Monday and passed away Wednesday. We didn't even know, we kind of knew he took a leave of absence, but they told us it wasn't health related, but apparently he had cancer, which he went through chemo, but it just spread too quickly and he just lost his battle. And his son just graduated from high school last year and is deaf so um it's just just prayers for everybody his wife and son it's just it's been hard because i knew him very well so could you say his first name jennifer is that uh, okay? dave brown dave mm -hmm. prayers for dave and his family his co-workers and all who knew him and could not even have really the chance to mourn his life or say goodbye to him, but have cherished his presence in their own lives. Jim and Claire. Yes, I just, I, our prayers for my family that's divided because of uh, politics. It's very, uh, it's making me very, I'm having sleepless nights over this because I have, uh, we have different political views and it's, and I love them very much, and it, and it really hurts. And also for our niece, uh, Joanne, who um, has breast cancer and just went through MSectomy on uh, Tuesday. Mm. So prayers for the body of the family, um, divided by politics and ideologies. Prayers for Joanne, who is being treated for cancer. Um, Cheryl, go for it. Hi, um, I wanted to, uh, to ask for prayers for healing for my cousin Kathy um, in Western Pennsylvania who just underwent surgery and hopefully is going home tomorrow. And also uh, prayers for Judy Schumann. Um, I don't have an update, but I know that she was hospitalized last week. I'm not sure if she's still in the hospital or I don't have details, but just general prayers for uh, Judy Schumann and healing. So prayers for both Cheryl's niece, Kathy, as well as for Judy Schumann, Kathy with her journey towards healing and Judy, whose status we don't really know today, but we will continue to follow up and reach out to her and let her know that she remains part of our beloved community. Other prayers in Zoom of concern. And then I'm going to ask for any prayers of celebration because we're going to celebrate and pray over our bodies as both a joy and a healing measure. So I have two in the sanctuary first, Alan. Well, 
Alan has uh, colleagues that have welcomed new babies into the world, so new life, always welcome. Kevin has a prayer of celebration. What is your Sunshine, songbirds, peace. And grateful for reverends and pastors. <laughs> Other prayers of celebration or gratitude or happiness that anyone in Zoom wants to share today? Deanna? My dad <clears throat> my dad's birthday. They've lost the internet, so he she can't say it. It's your dad's it birthday? Yeah, 84. 84. <laughs> well, we should uh, sing happy birthday to him anyway, and it will get recorded. Yeah, they're trying to do it on Facebook. Yeah. We're, we're, we're back. Oh, you're oh. back. Oh, good. Well, then we get to sing to, <laughs> we get to sing to Bill. We're going to do that in just a minute. I just want to take any other prayers of celebration before we go, go to that. Um. Any other prayers from Zoom of celebration? Please unmute yourselves if you want to share anything. All right, so I think here's the order that we're going to do our prayers. I'm actually wondering if the Varans would do this for me. We've been praying over the body, and I was wondering if Nora and or Autumn or both of you would just maybe stand up and put your hands on the different parts of the body as we um, pray the body. And that way you can help lead everybody else. Everybody else, you are welcome to put your hands in one place and leave them there. Or you can follow the Varans and me as we name the parts of the body. We're going to start with the top of our head, very tippy top of our head. And we're going to pray for everything that happens within this skull, within this head. We are praying for our wellness of our mind and our mental health, for those that struggle with depression or different kinds of mental health diagnoses or suicidality, for those who live with Alzheimer's or dementia, for those who live with epilepsy and other conditions that happen inside the brain among other places, and for those who are living with brain tumors. And then we're gonna go to our ears. We're gonna touch our ears. We're gonna pray for our ears. We're gonna pray for our eyes. We're gonna pray for our nose. We're gonna pray for our mouth and our lips. You don't have to stick your tongue out, but we're gonna pray for our tongue and our throat. We're gonna touch our throat and our neck. And then we're gonna move our hands backwards to the back of our neck and think about our spine and the connection between our head and our brain and our spine and the spine that conducts our nervous system down into our body and all the messages that are going through there. Then we're gonna put our hands on our heart. Then we're just gonna cross them across our chest then we're going to touch our entire abdomen, so our tummy, and we're going to think about our liver, our kidney, our spleen, our reproductive organs, our stomach, which is part of our GI tract, our pancreas. We're going to think about our lymphatic systems and our blood that's circulating through this entire part of the body and all the rest of the body. We're going to think about how the stomach is part of the GI tract and it goes from the throat clear down to the rectum because we have people that have problems with colons, with GI tracts. We are going to then touch all of our joints. Ready? We're going to do shoulders, elbows, hips, knees, ankles, wrists. Maybe we can just do one big circle around our whole body and think about the skin 
and all the parts of the body that just circulate from top to bottom and connect us all together. Ooh, and Nora did a spin to give us the whole body. I like that. That's great. All right, thank you so much. That was beautiful. And that is a prayer. Let us hold, and, and we've said it already. This is a prayer for our own bodies. It is a prayer for the bodies of our community, the bodies of our own church and our brother and sister churches and faith communities of all kinds all over the world. It is a prayer for the places in the world that are broken and need peace and need healing. From Burma to Zimbabwe to Honduras to our own nation. It is a prayer that we will uphold throughout this service as we consider what it means to be peacemakers in a time not unlike the time of Christ, where there is strife. And now, as part of our celebration, the people that don't miss synchronicity are gonna have a hard time with this, but we're gonna sing out loud for Bill, so please unmute yourselves. And Alan, could you play us your jauntiest version of, you know, like even <laughs> jazzy happy birthday. We're gonna get a jazzy happy birthday. <laughs> It's going to be messy, but it'll be beautiful. So here we go. Go ahead. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bill. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you, Done. We're, we're trying to like pick up the pace a little bit with our music. Mm -hmm. And let that be our prayer of gratitude. Gratitude for all the things that have been named today and gratitude for the lives of those that we can see and hear right now in this community, as well as those that we have lifted up, the lives of those who have gone ahead of us, the lives of those with whom we vigil, the people who come into our pathways and become our teachers and our friends and our neighbors, and our mentors and bring the life and the vision of Christ so much alive in our world. We give thanks for all of these lives. Now let us say together the Lord's Prayer. You can remain muted for this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. And this week, you'll hear the scripture in my voice, but the next few weeks, you're going to hear it in the voice of our youth. Today, we focus on two lines from the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, verses 8 through 9. We will share it with you in two versions. One is the New Revised Standard Version, and one comes from the message. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And from the message, you are blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. So ends the reading. And now please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I think we heard in this very prayer just today 
the ongoing need for peacemakers in our world. And the Beatitudes turn us towards both the pure of heart and the peacemakers. Now, when people first hear that phrase, pure of heart, it, it sounds like you're supposed to be a saint, um, that you're supposed to live this righteous, blameless life. Yet what we need to remember always about the Beatitudes is that the Beatitudes refer not to something that's already accomplished, not to a work or a state of being that we have already perfected, but literally to a work in progress, which is us and the, our lives and the way we live them. In point of fact, Nadia Boltz Weber asks whether the Beatitudes This is what she says. Nadia Boltz Weber, for anybody who doesn't know her, I, I always recommend her as a fabulous uh, pastor and theologian. She is a Lutheran minister, formerly a comedian, formerly a drug addict, formerly a very lost soul. She is now sober. She is a world renowned pastor. She's written several books. And the church that she founded out in Colorado is filled with people who are literally those that the Beatitudes turn us towards. She says, maybe the Sermon on the Mount is all about this lavish blessing of all the people on that hillside. Jesus blessing all the accidental saints in this world, especially those who in a world at that time, like ours, people didn't seem to have time for, people who were in pain, people who worked for peace instead of profit, and people who exercised mercy instead of vengeance. Jesus turned us towards the people whose voices we didn't normally hear. And Nadia Boltz Weber herself is a voice you might never have listened to in the past. She's covered in tattoos. She's always in chronic back pain. I've met her and listened to her. She's an amazing speaker, but she's not a person whose life you would have admired at the beginning. And yet they even say about every single one of the saints. Saints were the messiest people that God found a way to work through. There isn't a saint who didn't have a messy past. In point of fact, Kevin reminded us just a few weeks ago that Moses was a murderer that out of his righteous anger, he struck down a guard who was striking one of his own people. There isn't a person that you can admire in the Bible who doesn't also have a messy story to go with it. And so the Beatitudes aren't just for other people, they're for us. They're for us in our messiness and our imperfection. So perhaps rather than thinking about pure in heart, we could use the phrase single-minded and wholehearted when we listen to the verse that talks about the pure in heart and how they shall see God. When we, at different times in our lives, become passionate enough, focused enough to fixate our attention, our energy, on specific causes or goals that matter to us. It changes the way that we look at the world, the way we read the world, and the way we experience the world. And the message tells us that when we get our insides put in order, we will be able to see God's self in the outside world. We're all always trying to do that. And there are times when we're completely distracted and multitasking, and we don't have our attention focused in one place. But there are definitely experiences that all of us have had that pulled your attention in one direction and one direction only. And often it is preying over the pain in your own body or more often the body of another. When you have accompanied somebody that you love and you cherish, through journeys that challenge life itself, this is certainly one time when you are focused. And yet there are so many ways that people are focused and joyous. 
And whether it is in a time of pain or a time of reflection, your focus can lead you to perceive God in a new way right here in the world around you. So to peacemaking, the 8 o'clock group observed that this blessing is extended not to those who are peaceful in and of themselves, but those who are working on peace and making peace. Peace, like justice, like forgiveness, like mercy, is a process. It is something that we continue to work at over and over and over again. And one of the hardest parts about being a peacemaker is first wading into the discomfort of conflict. Because conflict often to us, I've said this before, feels as if we are broken. It feels as if we're doing something wrong and we should do whatever we can to suppress the conflict and not deal with it. But in point of fact, that is not how we grow as a community and that is not how we are present to each other as community. In order to be peacemakers, we need to be curious about the people around us who are different from ourselves different political perspectives, different ways of viewing and acting in the world. And it may be hard, and, we may, and it's not asking us to agree with people or necessarily even come to consensus. It is literally, if possible, to maintain a relationship or a sense of curiosity because we need to learn about the other in our world because the other is actually our neighbor, is our family, are those most deeply connected to us who will keep us, as Jim said, keep us up at night? Because we're in pain, because we need to be or want to be connected to them, but this division that has been sown feels like it's breaking us. And yet out of conflict when we can move into it, and I'm not saying that we're always able to because we're humans and sometimes we can't, or sometimes we're willing to be curious, and stand on the ground that we believe in, where we are rooted in our own truth, in our own beliefs, but listen to others and stay in connection with them. But not everybody is able to do that. Sometimes people already have an agenda or an absolute way of thinking, and they don't know how to be curious about each other. They can't reciprocate that, and we can't be in control of that part of any relationship. All we can do is put ourselves as peacemakers in a position to remain curious and open to relationship if it is possible. Because out of points of conflict in systems, in institutions, can come growth and transformation. It can be a place of deep change. But it is hard work and it is ongoing work, and like the work of forgiveness, you may go through it again and again and again, and you may get to certain parts of what it means to make peace and never get to what you think of as the fulfillment of peace. We are here to be peacemakers, not because we are promised that we're going to fix it all and get it all right, but because in our willingness to be a community that is diverse, we are also willing to wade into the difficulty of finding the value in each other's diversity or going past even that on this path of forgiveness, which I'm always going to point you to Desmond Tutu's book on the book of forgiveness because it's a very healthy and a safe way to go through that process. He was part of a nation that was learning how to forgive each other after deep violence and violation. But it must be done over time. It has to be done thoughtfully, and sometimes it can never be done with the people on the other end of the process involved in it. It may only be you going through it because part of working on peace is literally compassion for ourselves and being willing not to let the violence and the oppression that may be part of conflict maintain a hold on our lives. And so I point us towards the words of, it's attributed to Lao Tzu, there may be a different source for this, but the prayer for peace. 
If there is to be peace in the world, there must be peace in the nations. If there is to be peace in the nations, there must be peace in the cities. If there is to be peace in the cities, there must be peace among neighbors. If there is to be peace among neighbors, there must be peace in the home. And if there is to be peace in the home, there must be peace in the heart. Peace is a global idea, but it also begins with us. And all we're asked to do is to keep trying, but to do it in sustainable ways. And with compassion for ourselves and for others. Knowing that we're not always going to get it right, but we keep trying. And so the call of the Beatitudes today is for you to give your whole heart and your whole mind over to redemptive love that models justice tempered by mercy, that models love that allows you to love yourself as well as your neighbors, and through these things to love God's self. We are works in progress, but we are God's works in progress. And God is working through us in this world right now. And so what you need to know is that you are enough because you are not alone. Love is working through you and with you and in you always. That is the blessing of the Beatitudes. Amen. So friends, you know I offer you my weekly reminder that your offerings help us to continue the work of this church in these changing times. We are one of many churches in this valley who shine a light in the world and we shine a light right here among our neighbors. You are shining lights in your parts of the world, but you are part of our community and you are shining a light and we are shining a light through you together all over the world. And so we ask for your support, your donations. Um, you can make them to jxncc.org. You can send them in by mail. You can drop them in the slot of the little church inside the big church, inside the unlocked doors of our sanctuary, if you wish. However you wish to make your contributions, they are much appreciated. And they are the living love of God in the world. And now Alan is going to lead us in a just perfectly paced version of Lord, I want to be a Christian. Um, the words are going to come up on the screen, and he'll give us an intro. You stay muted, and we're going to give this a whirl.
And now we will follow up with the benediction, which, as you know, is a blessing for all of you to go in peace. So today, when you leave here, go with a whole heart, singleness of purpose, and the desire to be connected to what is holy and redemptive in this world, and go in peace as peacemakers.